This is the second part of uh, the lecture starting a clinical engineering uh, department or service. Uh, prior to start with this second part, which is the planning phase, uh, we will have some photos for uh, well-known uh, hospitals in the USA. Uh, and uh, we will have a talk about uh, the biomedical engineering department at such hospitals. The first hospital is a New, New York uh, Presbyterian Hospital. Uh, we can see in this image uh, a part of the biomedical team in this hospital. The biomedical team at the New, New York Presbyterian Hospital is uh, made up of 120 full-time employees. Uh, the hospital size is uh, <coughs> 2,508 certified beds uh, with a uh, 135 bassinets. The inventory of uh, the medical devices is around 70,000 devices. Another also a well-known hospital uh, is a Pedmont Atlanta Hospital. We can see the biomedical engineering uh, department team. Here also we uh, see a photo for a clinical engineering working uh, at the clinical engineering uh, shop. This is another photo also. <clears throat> now we will start with the part two of the lecture, which is the planning phase. Uh, in this part, we will cover four points. The first point, the steps to start a clinical engineering department. Uh, then we'll talk uh, about the workload analysis. Uh, after that, we'll talk about the qualifications and educational levels for the team, for each member of team inside the, the department. And finally, we'll have a talk about the clinical engineering shop. Uh, in this diagram, uh, we see the different steps uh, to start a clinical engineering department. And we will talk uh, about each one of them. Uh, we will start with uh, the first step, which is the, to determine the inventory of the medical equipment items. It is a very important aspect in the startup of the clinical engineering department. We should inventory, uh, inventory of all medical devices and determine if other areas may also be responsibility of the department, such as the IT communications, AV systems and facilities equipment. A basic uh, physical inventory is a best. Uh, we should use tagging, tagging system. A standardized uh, nomenclature must be used. Uh, we should include data for each device. Such data should include uh, the type, the manufacturer, the model, serial number, condition, location, and owner department. The device also should be tagged with a unique control number, uh, barcode or uh, an RFID tag. Uh, the RFID tag is an acronym, uh, acronym sorry, for radio frequency identification. Uh, also, we should include uh, the purchase date, the cost, and so on. The second step uh, will be the uh, to determine the maintenance regularity and support requirements for each item then we should make a match which the match each device with all the current aspects of maintenance and support uh, for example for each device we should include the vendors cost services contracts and so on uh, assess the current services and cost uh, in-house out-house uh, what about uh, the uh, material, uh, spare parts, and everything required for this one? Then we will make an interview uh, for the staff to determine the quality of the current services, what uh, their uh, expectations and the wishes of such uh, staff. Uh, in order, um, either we make uh, uh, increase the in-house uh, or uh, substitute uh, with another form depends uh, on the uh, feedback from the staff. Uh, 
second uh, the second step after that will be determine the best max for the equipment support um, as we said before uh, we should make a mixture between in-house and house uh, this depends on the the factors which have uh, talked about in the part one um, we should for example eliminate the expensive manufacturer service contracts should be eliminated in order to be uh, to minimize the cost the total cost for the maintenance after that we will make analyze the for the workload and the technical staffing needs uh, example uh, what uh, be served for example machines and the imaging uh, if you want uh, IT uh, services inside the biomedical or clinical engineering department uh, if we need a, a team specialized in the laboratory equipment or imaging or other specialty what type of testing and repair equipment uh, needed in our work what the space will be what the stock parts which should be available in our store uh, furnishing what type of the computerized management system we should use to manage uh, the medical devices in the hospital and so on after that we make an evaluation of the other services other than the maintenance the clinical engineering is uh, services include maintenance and other services for example the other ser uh, services include uh, tec uh, technology planning consultation uh, patient safety support uh, recalls uh, another one is the incident evaluation uh, smda reporting uh, education or training for the staff sharing in a special projects uh, facilities supports it support etc so as we said the uh, clinical engineering service is made up of two parts one part is the maintenance other parts include other services which uh, which we have uh, which uh, we had mentioned now so based in the uh, all services the engineering and the other uh, services we should now determine the total cost and after that we should develop a proposal uh, this proposal should uh, come with a strong executive summary a high data integrity and solid analysis and justification and a package in an attractive package or represented in an attractive package to the senior management at the hospital so these are the steps required to start a clinical engineering department now we will move to the second step which is the workload analysis for a clinical engineering department so workload analysis must take into consideration the expected productivity usually productivity is expressed as percentage uh, the productive time divided by overall work time and we multiplied it by 100 uh, the work time is usually uh, is the total time when we subtract uh, subtract from it the vacations holidays and sick time also depends on the hospital sometimes we not include also the training the staff meetings uh, the shop clean up travel and administrative time and the administrative time so it depends uh, on the hospital uh, this work time uh, can be different after that uh, we should determine uh, the size of uh, the, the team inside the department uh, we can use uh, a benchmarking solution such as the one uh, made by the AMI, which is an acronym for the Association for the Advancement in the Medical Instrumentation. We can see uh, how we should determine the number of the biomedical uh, technicians or engineers or supervisors or managers or whatever. For example, we can select, uh, we can determine the number of the biomedical uh, technicians based on the number of devices or in the number of the beds or the number of uh, purchased uh, medical devices. Uh, also, uh, the clinical uh, engineers are determined based on the numbers of uh, the biomedical technicians uh, and so on. So, in this part, we should start 
to determine the size of uh, the team. Uh, well, then we should uh, put uh, a, what we call the common responsibilities for each one of this team. For example, the director uh, who leads the department sets the vision, uh, deals with the executive level activities and represents the department. Whereas the biomedical technician supervisor should supervise primarily maintenance, installations, upgrades, and so on. Uh, supervisors, uh, each supervisor should manage or will manage between five to ten uh, biomedical technicians. Uh, as for the biomedical technicians, uh, we have uh, to, uh, a classification based on uh, if they are a general or a specialized in a certain equipment like the laboratory and uh, and uh, radiology. Also, we have different levels for the biomedical uh, technicians based on the experience. We have a level one, level two, and level three. So in general, the biomedical technicians can be separated into two groups, uh, specialized group and general group. And uh, in general group, we have also another classification based uh, on the years of experience. We have a level one, level two, and level three. Finally, the clinical engineer uh, should be involved uh, in the consultation projects and technical services as required. So we start with talk about the uh, work uh, about the productivity uh, and how we can calculate the productivity. Then we moved uh, to determine the size of the biomedica of the team inside the department. And finally, now we talked about uh the responsibility or what we call the job description for each one uh, inside this uh, department uh, here we see also a diagram which shows the career progression matrix we can take an example for the biomedical technician as we said before uh, the biomedical technicians are classified based on their years of experience uh, first uh, we have a biomedical uh, technician level one after a certain uh, period, it becomes a biomedical uh, technician level two, and then level three, and so on. Now we will talk about the qualification and the education levels. For example, a director and uh, we will start with the director and the clinical engineers. Uh, they should have uh, a bachelor degree in engineering, uh, preferable to be in biomedical or other uh, related field like electrical engineering, uh, telecommunication, electronic, and so on. Uh, as for the directors and managers, they need also, in addition to the engineering skills, they need uh, business training. Uh, considering the biomedical technicians, so they should for uh, they should have for example a, 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 a two year associate degree in biomedical technology or as the uh, or any other alternative now we will move to the uh, uh, last point in uh, the part 2 which is about the clinical engineering workshop the shop area of the department space requirement should include an adequate uh, electrical supply, medical gases in case we need to test, for example, a ventilator and state the machine and so on, phone lines, a computer connections to be uh, integrated into the health system, uh, parts and manual storage area, excellent lighting, adequate workbenches, and uh, so on. Uh, the size of this space will depend on the size of the equipment which need to be uh, repaired or fixed or even uh, uh, calibrated. For example, in case for example, in case of portable X-ray or ventil uh, ventilators, we need a, la a larger space. Uh, another point in the clinical engineering shop are the test and equip equipment, which should include a digital uh, voltmeter. Uh, an oscilloscope, electrical safety analyzer, uh, simulators and analyzer based on the equipment uh, needs. Um, also, another uh, testing equipment which uh, may be needed 
are the environmental which are required for environmental measurements for the measurement of the power frequency uh, and so on such as the spectrum analyzer and electrical power analyzer uh, the last point which will be considered in the clinical engineering show uh, is the storage part for what are the parts uh, stock the part stock depends on uh, emergent requirements in the inventory ser inventory serves the failure rates shipping time from the vendor and the customer needs uh, for uh, an example of the parts which should be stored uh, in the clinical engineering department, batteries, cables, uh, common parts, uh, and oxygen cells, for example, uh, some uh, items like uh, 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 service manual kits, uh, annual or semi annual, and so on. Finally, if you are serving an off-site location, sometimes, as we said, uh, the hospital will be part of a network, so we are serving off-site locations. The logistics are different along with the resources, the testing equipment, vehicles, and other tra traveling uh, resources.